Okay, today I'm in Birmingham with uh, legendary rails bookmaker Mickey Fletcher. Thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us, uh, Mick. Otherwise known as the, the Asparagus Kid, so we better get that out of the way first. Where did that come from? Oh, this goes back probably 40 or 50 years, Simon. I, I had a pal, Matty Archer. Remember, he had good horses with... Uh, started off with uh, Nigel, Nigel Twiston Davis, ended up with Pipey. And he had a market business, wholesale market business. So this is, I was a Tic Tac and a clerk. So this would be 40 or 50 years ago. I used to go down the wholesale market in Birmingham, have this bag of sale or return, had an old post office van, and a sale or return. So you, the worst way, you're gonna break level. I used to take it to uh, sell to all the bookies, get myself two or three, now 50 years ago, two or 300 quid was a lot of money. It was 70 pounds standby to Miami. Straight after the meeting, I'd be off to Miami, <laughs> Tell me money run out over there and then I'll bring King Edward's cigars back. They was two dollars a box in the States. You get twenty pounds from there. Everything was kosher till the uh, the customs man got me at the airport. So that was my cigar importing business. So that was basically the nickname came about that way. So so you said you was a tic tac when did you first start working on race courses? Oh dear. Well I kicked off I was I played football for West Bromwich Albion. And you had to go back to training Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, the young kids. My training was done at the Cedar nightclub in Birmingham, so I never lasted very long there. I had six O levels and two A levels. I was a well-educated lad, got office jobs. Played football part-time, getting a 10 out of 10, which 50 years ago now would be the equivalent of 100 quid, I suppose. I was always a punter at the dogs and whatnot, so and then I worked for a fellow called Dunbarrows for a long, long time. They had a nightclub in Birmingham called the Rum Runner where Duran, Duran started. Anyhow, so I started off tic tacking and clerking and just went from there. So with the, when you say you were punting, were you, were you out Very unsuccessful <laughs> before you asked the question. You know what punters do, mate? I was always at it getting six to four even money chances or whatever, always being over the, the price, but if you stand still, you know, you've got to back plenty of winners when you're back in thin ends. So you you got your tank together by buying and selling cigars and... Well, and you stuff. gradually learn as you get older, you get more experience and stuff, you know. Uh, basically, if you work for people, you eat fish and chips. We all like to eat steak and lobster, drink nice wine. You know, so you got to... I worked in the streets, I wasn't frightened to work. The last month of Christmas, I'd, I'd get some swag and stuff and sell it in the streets, sell football calendars. I was always a good grafter, but then he'd go out the way and I was always travelling. I went to the States in the late 70s. I lived there, I got in trouble gambling. I was there for the best part of uh, three years, come home for a week here, a week there. I, fantastic, I was in Miami putting some beds out, a dollar at a time, that was mine. I was getting $800, uh, $800 a week. 50 years ago, 40 odd years ago. It's a lot of money now, never mind then. I would have come back with two fortunes, but I was going to Hollywood Dog Track and um, uh, Hialeah was open then. Gulfstream that's still open, you know, so, but I came back with money. Got a little cheap. I worked for a fella at this stage when I came back called Lenny Bowden, big bookie in the Midlands, big liar. He had the best pitch of Perry Bar. He got me a, a picture, or he was influential in getting me a pitch in the silver ring at Perry Bar. There were six pitches there, I bet number six, and it was it was good, you know, it was fantastic. Uh, every time a pitch came up, this is typical bookies, so there were 10 bookies inside paying £20 a night rent, pitch money, so £200. If somebody got knocked out, nobody was promoted from the silver ring, they'd pay an extra two or three quid to keep people out. Anyhow, things went on from there. Perry Bar closed down. A new Perry Bar opened, but within about two or three years, they put us all into Wolverhampton Dog Track. The first night, would you remember a fellow called Bob Jacobs? Yeah, yeah. Usually he had a money partner with him, you know, but he was a good fella. Loved to drink. Um, the first night, there was about 30 bookies in one line. They returned four at the eight races over broke. They were going down like 10 pin bowlers, you know. Even me. I got about three grand to me name. Oh, what am I going to do here? Anyhow, I took a, a lad on called Mickey Wernick. Big gambler. He used to be down. He used to find the money for Johnny somebody down in the West Country. Uh, he was a gambler, big gambler. 
used to have the occasional bet with me. Usually dogs, first race favourite, last race favourite, get the punters in happy, send them home happy. He used to come in the last race, do you want to lay even under a quid? So yeah, okay, so I said to him, I got all my workmen, he was a black country lad as well, I said, look, tell him, well, hell, I better be careful there. You imagine, we had a deal with the tax, let's put it that way. Anyhow, if he'd have hit the bell, I'd have had to tell him a story. All of a sudden, I built a business up, taking packets, 20, 30,000 a night. It was fantastic, Mum agreed. We all got a letter, six people on the, they kept six people out of all the bookies. I was one of the six that they kept. All the uh, old schools act, all the old bookies. They weren't, uh, you know, that was the end of them at certain, about three weeks time. And now they organized for all the Tic Tacs and Clarks from all the other dog tracks in the Midlands that was gonna come on and stop the racing. So they said to me, come on, we're going on now. I said, yeah, you can go on on your own. Nobody was there to help me when the, when the pitches of Perry Bar. Anyhow, by this time I built a few quid up. The only place you could get pitches was on the rails. Nowhere else. You gotta be born into the game. You couldn't buy, buy, and, buy and selling pitches was 20, 30 years into the future. It, was, well, it wasn't corrupt, it was just they kept its old pals up. I put £10,000 up, you could get pitches everywhere on the rails. £10,000 deposit for three years, cash I had to pay, and two five grand guarantors. That was almost my tank. You know, basically I started and I ran round on the back of Ladbrokes. Ladbrokes were shortening horses up four or five times at the six races. I just earned, earned, earned out of them uh, for two years to build a float up. The best story ever, this will be the first good story. Their accounts at the time was three weekly. So by the time the, the cheque had come and gone in the bank, it'd be four weeks. I'd held Leslie Stirl up. You know Leslie Stirl, the big, he was, he was 100. 100 the other day, a big, big, not good fella. Good fella, Leslie. Anyhow, the phone goes one day. Leslie's on the phone, I knew what was coming. Hello, Leslie. How are you? How are you doing, Les? How's the game? I knew what was coming. He says, there's the game. Where's my cheque? I says, Leslie, I says, let me make inquiries. I don't know what's going on here. Anyhow, I thought, what am I going to do? I walked down the little village where I've just brought you through, warmly, it's five or six shops. There's a post box at the end. The Irish navvies have got the road works up. So I'm running back to, the, uh, to my house. I said, Leslie, I found out what's happened. I said, the Irish navvies have got the barriers up by the post box. It's obvious the postman can't get to leave the letters. He said, I've heard some in my lifetime. When you get on your feet, make sure I'm first on your list. So that was that. So I badly built money up and that was it. It was a good game. The rails was fantastic. It was big gambling. So what was your game on the rails? Well, I was very lucky. I had a fellow called Jimmy Green who, he was the original rep with Lab Books. So one day he'd be in Edinburgh. This is before 40, 50 years ago. This was the, Cyril Steam was a hot cookie. You know, he was the first to use people to shorten horses on the course. One day he'd be at Edinburgh, the next day at Folkestone. Next thing you know, when John Banks ruled the ring, he worked with John Banks. Then he was with Hills, I know he wasn't very happy there, and he just adopted me, he came with me. Now he was a hot cooker. You asked Derek Smith, Tabor, JP, all buzzing pals, did business from all, real good fella. And he was a hot cooker, so he was a massive, massive help to me. He died about 10 or 11 years ago. So I would play the game most of the time. Even if I went with a thinning, I'd still put it in the book. But instead of being six to four on, I'd have probably six to four against to my money, you know, and give the rags a trip, you know. It was good. The rails was good. It was big gambling. I was lucky because Stephen Little, uh, Victor Chandler, uh, all, all, all the bigger firms were halfway down the rails. Dudley Roberts, they hadn't been there too long, so I was just on the edge of it. Jimmy was good because I would get looked after with the lad books. You always got to have help in this game, you know, so that was my big start. And we just went on from there. Some ups and downs, but mostly ups. It was a good game. I only did about 110 meetings a year, and I would have four months away a year. You know, every month, not because I was a playboy, I get on a plane for a week. If you stand horses for two and three grand every race, no matter when you're young, you got more, more bottle, you know, as you get older, you know, so that was that. It was a good game.
So you, you, it must have been like uh, going into the lion's den, though, when you, when oh, you first very started. Much so. so you must have had to learn quick, oh, even you though have you to, had to help. Well, book, listen, bookmaking is relatively simple. You write numbers on a board. The old days, this is pre-Betfair. All you had to do was write numbers on the board, but you had to change them quicker. You know, it was all supply and demand. I was good with odds. I'd been brought up as a tic tac and clerk. You know, the modern people, all they can do is copy what they're saying on Betfair. You know, they wouldn't know what six to four each or two was. He wouldn't know it represented a four on chance or whatever else. You know, so you had to learn on your feet. You had to be with certain people and against certain people. You know, I never give a punter a sack. I never, if the punter was too clever for me, I never squirreled after the race. It's too late. But I had plenty, particularly at the dogs. You know, I had plenty of rows before the race. I wouldn't bet them. And when they said, well, you're the big book, eh? I said, well, when you want your monkeys on every race, there I am. But don't come for me every once every three months, you know. So you wouldn't be you wouldn't be frightened to sort of know when know when. I wouldn't be frightened to good. upset. Yeah, mm. I wouldn't be frightened to upset people. You know, I had to keep my, my family happy and I had to keep my bank management and travel agent happy. Mm. 